Hello there, my fellow Battle Brothers, and welcome to another dose of the Space Marine Chapter's lore. Today actually marks a very special occasion, because we're gonna describe our very first homebrew chapter, aka fanmade chapter, on the channel. These guys are known as the Golden Reclaimers, and have a very original story indeed. I would also like to know that I am in no way claiming this lore as my own, I am just narrating the description. It belongs to its writer. The second note I wanted to make is about the pictures for homebrew chapters in general. Many of them have very few, if barely any pictures at all. So these videos might be a bit bereft of artwork. All that being said, I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us proceed, shall we? The Golden Reclaimers were formed as part of the 26th founding alongside several other Space Marine chapters. Taking Gene Seed tithed from the Imperial Fists, several decades were spent creating this new generation of warriors, and once it was ready, two dozen Space Marines of the Imperial Fists were chosen to lead them. During that period, a mighty fortress monastery was constructed on the agri-world of Varan, in the Segmentum Pacificus. Of these chosen marines was Elgast Cotenu, a former champion of the 5th company who was chosen to lead this brand new chapter. The veterans would oversee the training of the chapter's first neophytes, molding them into an effective fighting force until the reclaimers reach fighting strength. Most of the early recruits were plucked from the dangerous hive worlds like Necromunda at the chapter master's request believing that those who survived in those places were good enough to join the Astartes and also make fine warriors for urban warfare. The very first battle of great distinction of the Golden Reclaimers came during one of their first deployments in 786 M41, after they crushed the heretical rebellion taking place on Hulden II, a nearby hive world. There they fought not only the treacherous godsmen and the citizens, but many demonic creatures that their masters had summoned. In just under one week, the reclaimers had broken all resistance, and in a surprising display of mercy, they had spared the few cities on the planet which had not taken part in the rebellion. Unfortunately, the discovery by Chapter Master Cotenu that most of Hulden II's ruling class were Chaos Worshippers, led to the complete destruction of whatever leadership the planet had left. Now the conquerors of a nearly lawless planet, the Golden Reclaimers stayed on the world long enough for the Imperium to dispatch reinforcements, and also spent time planning out its reconstruction. Seeing for the first time the need to ensure that conquered planets did not rebel again later on, a decision was made by the chapter to reform the Ninth Company. This in turn led to the creation of a force known as the Janissaries. As the chapter master wanted to devote most of the reclaimers' resources to reclaiming worlds which had fallen out of contact with the Imperium, they required sort of a rear guard to quickly respond to threats while the majority of the chapter was away. With this contingency in place began the so-called Great Reclamation. Setting out from Varan as part of a larger fleet, the Golden Reclaimers began moving from system to system, battling traitors, heretics, and aliens every step of the way. Although a fairly slow process, precautions had to be made so the chapter didn't stretch itself too thin. Supply chains were set up for ammunition, and most importantly, replacement space marines. Following the doctrine set by Chapter Master Cotenu, they attempted to ensure that the infrastructure of the conquered worlds was kept relatively intact for imperial recolonization. This continued advance into the Segmentum Pacificus would prove to be quite a success for the chapter, although they lacked the numbers to make the kind of impact that the Makarian Crusade had made years earlier. After well over a century of battle, the actions of the chapter had gone largely from pacifying and reclaiming lost human worlds to fighting off the enemies of the Imperium on multiple fronts. It was in 903 M41 that they faced a crisis, as the 6th Company was decimated in a large-scale ambush by the Iron Warriors. While reinforcements arrived in the shape of the 1st, 2nd, and 5th Companies, which rescued the survivors, 
Another set of small-scale attacks and sabotage attempts across the Reclaimer's fleet in the aftermath brought the fear that they had been infiltrated. As a result, the campaign was stalled as the Reclaimers were forced to purge their entire fleet of possible traitors. While they were successful in that endeavor, the Golden Reclaimers found themselves continuously plagued by more attacks of the Iron Warriors and their followers over the next few years, even while campaigning against other enemies. In 920 M41, their supply fleet was ambushed when a group of enemy warships exited the warp and swiftly captured them before retreating, costing the Reclaimers a lot of resources. Unwilling to risk losing momentum in their own campaign, Chapter Master Kotenu had their supplies redirected to an outpost on a desolate planet called UN-9. Under the pretense of establishing a new fortress there, midway between their fleet and their homeworld of Varon, and then moved a good portion of the 1st, 5th and 8th companies to the surface before sending the fleet out of the system. Sure enough, the Iron Warriors launched another attack, just as the supply vessels moved into UN-9's orbit, this time making a drop to destroy the fortress. As the Chaos Space Marines met little resistance from the local PDF and the chapter serfs, their overconfidence carried them straight into the trap of the Reclaimers. The area around the planetary fortress had been turned into a kill zone, with mines, turrets and more. As such, the usually well-prepared Iron Warriors found themselves caught as their dropships were blown out of the sky and their landing parties torn to shreds, while those that landed in the base itself found themselves facing a lot of Terminators, led by Captain Rufus Hume himself. The Chaos Space Marines were badly outnumbered and quickly routed as they tried to flee the planet, forcing their cultist minions to act as a rearguard while they tried to rejoin their ships in orbit. It was then that the Reclaimer's battle barge arrived near the planet alongside their fleet. Having accurately predicted that their enemy would focus their efforts almost entirely on the world below, the Space Marines fleet had made a short jump away from the system and then immediately plotted a course back towards UN-9. Launching a wave of boarding torpedoes, members of the 2nd Company attacked the Iron Warrior flagship. Upon planting a teleport homer on the vessel, they were then joined by more Terminators of the 1st Company. And in the second wave of boarders, the Chapter Master caught a new himself. Fighting all the way to the bridge, the Reclaimers encountered the enemy leader, a warsmith called Nunro. In the following single combat, Kotanyu almost killed the Iron Warrior, who was barely able to escape death after teleporting away to another vessel. Just one Chaos Cruiser was able to escape the engagement, while the Reclaimers slaughtered all their surviving forces and scuttled their vessels. After that, the chapter declared victory and they were able to successfully re-establish their supply line back to Varon and continue their campaign elsewhere. In the centuries they spent reclaiming worlds for the Imperium, the Golden Reclaimers have become adept at capturing cities and strongholds in rapid assaults, which are designed to break into enemy lines quickly. While many chapters will only deploy small contingents of Space Marines to their engagements, the Reclaimers often operate with almost half the chapter in any single battle, potentially deploying hundreds of Space Marines at any given time. Although this makes them incredibly effective shock troops, it also displays a clear weakness, as a major defeat could leave them badly undermanned, necessitating the need for a decisive victory on the battlefield each and every time. Even smaller engagements generally warrant the deployment of several squads, as the intention is to bring victory as quickly as possible. As a relatively new chapter, they do not possess a particularly large fleet, with just one battle barge and about a dozen strike cruisers. With the chapter master usually aboard their battle barge, the Ve Victis, it operates as a mobile command center for the entire chapter, who often operate far away from their homeworld. While the Golden Reclaimers are a Codex adherent chapter for the most part, their ninth company, as mentioned earlier, was reorganized into a force known as the Janissaries. Due to the chapter's habit of helping organize the reconstruction and repopulation of conquered planets after taking them, 
Chapter Master Kotanyu decreed that this company would act as a kind of quick response force in the Reclaimer territory should any news of possible descent be uncovered. While they don't see as much battle as their brothers, the Ninth Company often assists the Tenth Scout Company in the training and gathering of new recruits, in addition to their other duties. These Janissaries are easily marked by their distinctive red robes, and in spite of their duty to crush any potential rebellion, they are generally well liked by the civilian populations for their constant presence in the region. In fact, when the sector was threatened by Wa Gankilt in 934 and 41, it was the Janissaries that were the first responders, successfully repelling the orc invasion of a local hive world enough for reinforcements to arrive in the system. It was during that engagement that their captain, Volonaro Rul, led an assault which smashed into the orc lines and ended in the death of the war boss. While almost half the company was slain during that assault, they successfully limited the damage that the Wa could have done, and were highly commended when the battle was done. Just like many other chapters, the Golden Reclaimers recruit from dangerous worlds across the Imperium, seeking those that are skilled or hardy enough to possess space marine potential. In particular, Hive Cities are regarded as the prime recruiting ground for the chapter, influenced by their own preference for urban warfare. All the neophytes are trained in the Golden Fortress on Varen, kept underground within the fortress monastery's lower chambers for months and months, as they will undergo various testing, physical and mental. Those that make it through the initial stages of training are then put through a rigorous trial in the deepest levels of the fortress, a test designed to push the neophyte's pain resistance to the limit. Modeled after the Imperial Fist's own infamous Tunnel of Terror, recruits are expected to survive extreme temperature, simulated injury, and sensory deprivation over the course of many hours. Only then do they undergo the indoctrination and extensive surgery required to transform them from regular human into superhuman space marine. Eventually, the recruits undergo an initiation ceremony and are finally brought up from the lower levels to the surface. Exiting the fortress monastery just before dawn, they are allowed outside for the first time in months and recite the Reclaimer's Oath as the sun rises, formally being sworn into the chapter. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the fan-made chapter known as the Golden Reclaimers for today. To be honest, as my very first homebrew chapter I actually read about in detail, the lore here might actually be even better than many canon chapters. There's definitely a lot of players out there with a rich imagination and a good writing skill so hopefully I will be able to describe more of these chapters in the near future. What are your thoughts on covering more homebrew chapters? What about your thoughts on the Golden Reclaimers? Do share any thoughts, or questions if you got any, in the comments below. If you enjoyed the video, please click the like, share and subscribe buttons for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a great and healthy day. The Emperor Protects.